Okay, I cannot find him. Ah, here you are, sir. What do you mean, not now? Don't you dare go inside the tent. Stop. Talk to me. Don't leave me. I've been so alone during COVID. No! Peggy, 18. Oh, come on! I just loaded the game and you give me three achievements for nothing? Six achievements? What the hell? <laughs> Did okay, okay. I, I see what happened here. Okay, I understand now. So, um, this is not how I usually start off any of my episodes, but... What you need to understand is that from episode 1 until episode 5, we were working with the 1.300 version of the game. Currently on Steam, if you would try to launch the game, you will see in the menu of the title that it is currently sitting at 1.3002 or something like this. So this might have triggered this many achievements to basically pop up now if you are a returning viewer welcome if you are one of the new subscribers welcome i'm gonna try to publish as much content related to the game of crone as possible i will slow down the pace eventually because it is taking a toll on my laptop and also I kind of need to sleep and do other stuff too, so yeah, it, it just be patient with me people, okay? And yeah, so since we are already starting off with me talking like this, we have few things here with about which we can talk. So first of all, we have received the memory powder. Memory powder is required for one of the new alchemy recipes which can be obtained when you now get the game. We do have the vampire's jaw and we will need to do this weird memory thing with Clotho or maybe even without her using the newly acquired alchemy recipe. The witcher's eye will for now remain in my inventory and the revolutionary message will be probably dropped off somewhere along in one of the many many crates and the memory tincture recipe is something which we will need to take a look at so if we were to use the memory tincture recipe nothing happened which is kind of weird but okay uh it might be actually in one of the new blueprints which have been added to the game itself and kind of don't see it okay that's kind of uh, super weird Okay, so you know what, let's go into the cellar and we will try to work with that. Yeah, and this is why I usually like skip showing you my basement because there are dead bodies doing god knows what with the alcohol which I am then selling. Seriously, if there would be any control of hygiene, I would be probably shut down immediately on the spot. So, yeah, let's, let's just ignore this mess for now and let's go see if we can do something regarding that new added alchemy recipe. So the strange thing is that actually I cannot see it in any of the blueprints, but we still might be able to utilize it. So let's see, do I have bath wings somewhere where I can store them away or do I just throw them away? Okay. So when you will launch the game now, what you will be able to see is in the Alchemy Workbench Tier 2, you have access to the Memory Tincture. 
Now, this is the unstable, unreliable, unbearable spray in the bottle for both eyes. And you will require memory powder, silver powder, and gold powder. Now, you can now actually get both the silver powder and the gold powder from the newly added merchant in the refugee camp, which is actually super awesome. Otherwise, you would require raw silver and raw gold, and if you are not yet having access to the tech or the dungeon, so for example, if we were to go to here, you would require the precious metals research in order to have access to gathering gold ore or silver ore and then you would need to actually use them in the alchemy mill over here or the grindstone or alchemy mill actually that's the correct name to make those powders but now with the merchant available to you in the refugee camp you can do this now one thing which i wanted to actually talk talk about is the fact that if you decide to now get the game because it's discounted and you have access to a lot of new DLC content and just the Stranger Sins itself took me quite a long time to go through as there were like 17 or how many of the trinkets with the visions from the past and so I'm not really sure how much content is there for this DLC as I said on the first episode that there is something around 18 to 19 achievements and based on what you were able to see I'm not even sure how many of them did appear so yeah it's, it's gonna look like I have no life today on my steam page because I'm gonna have just a ton of achievements on one day but okay whatever I cannot complain so yeah that that's the deal so uh, that's that, and also, I kind of don't know how the game will now function when you start a brand new save file. You see, if you are playing the Game of Crone DLC, some of these events are just triggered by you waking up either at your home or walking outside from your home. So for example, when you wake up inside your home, you find the Marquis, who is now currently sitting in the refugee camp. In case you want to know who the heck I'm talking about, we need to scroll all the way down over here somewhere in order to find him. Where's the young lad? Okay, so this is Marquis, so he would appear inside of your home. Then, when you walk outside, the local blacksmith would actually talk to you. Where is Creswold? Oh my god, I cannot take them apart. They, they all have these amazing beards. Yeah, so Creswold, he will basically call you to a town meeting where some of the other NPCs, such as uh, the Carpenter Brothers, will talk and you will basically learn nothing. So, I'm not really sure how all these things would get triggered, because just the start of the game is really, really heavy on content. As you wake up, you go outside, you dig out Gary, then Gary introduces you to the donkey, he shows you inside of your morgue, you then take apart your first body, then you have to go into the town to drop off the burial certificate, then you go and talk to the blacksmith, then you have to return to the town innkeeper and it's just really packed in with content you also talk with the bishop etc etc so there's just way too much stuff to happen and some of these things actually do require later in-game stages or technology for you to be able to get to those places so for example i'm not really sure if you can trigger the game of chrome dlc if you have access to this part of the map and for that actually you will need to clear out a patch of rocks which is laying over here also this is the first place where you can find your first zombie too so 
yeah i'm not really sure how a brand new save file would overall work so the content seems to be thrown all over the place and i'm quite sure the developer have some form of a plan on how these events would be eventually triggered one after another but yeah that that should be it for the intro let's just skip more of my talking and let's try to cover some of the newly added content to the game so we are gonna make one of the memory tinctures and i'm not really sure if we have still for example with clotho the option or showing the possibility to trigger the tincture yeah okay so clotho has nothing for us to offer and therefore what happens if we decide to use this thing and now spray it into both eyes jesus It's worse than shepherd's garlic. Ah! Nothing. Well, Clotho warned me. Let's try one more time. Damn tincture. Oh my god, is this gonna be like some bad trip with the drug use where they don't kick in until you like overdose not knowing that you did overdose? Wait, how many of these things do I have to make it? Why is it only a one-time use? Seriously, do you know how hard it is to get a silver powder and gold powder in these parts? It's not like I'm made out of money. Never mind. Hey, okay, let's try one more hit. Nothing again. Uh, if we now would try to talk to Clotho, would there be any difference? Like the fact that it's not working or should I actually go and try to get the third hit? The problem with that is that I will need to go to the town in order to get my hands on more of the silver powder. And by town I mean the refugee camp. But if I am actually going to go to the refugee camp, there is one thing which I should do before. So we are gonna use the teleportation stone. We're gonna transport ourselves to the town. It's still daylight, so I should be able to talk to the beekeeper. And the beekeeper should be willing to sell me some bees so that we can get... Ooh, there's something with, for which we can use the witcher's eye too here. Um, so yeah, uh, if I get the bees here... Actually, you know what? Let's grab 20. Just in case. I'm not really sure how many beehives will we be able to construct for the refugee camp and by constructing the beehives uh, the cook from the refugee camp should share with us some newly added recipes so let's go ahead purchase those bees since we are here how about we try to trigger whatever is in between the beehives In the center, Beekeeper puts up mannequin portraying Adam with targets on his legs and arms. Beekeeper strikes a gong, nothing happens. Beekeeper takes the mannequin away and brings in Dick, is happily licking a honey stick with targets attached to his body. God damn it, you are. Nasty! Poor Dig. Okay, so if you don't know, well, this dude is trying to train a carnivorous bees or, or man-eating bees or just killer bees. So, yeah, he, he's, he's the real psycho. 
Okay, I'm not really sure if we will still manage to make it to the refugee camp and be able to talk to the cook. The happiness is sitting at 6.77 out of 9. Okay, where can we put the beehives? Okay, it looks like there is room for three of them. And I am able to put down two. So we are down to 2.77 of the refugee happiness. If we build these two things, I'm not really sure if the beehives will be able to increase the happiness. It looks more specifically just related to the cook herself. So we have constructed the beehives. It looks like the self-running garden has successfully finished off another set of crops. So let's give them some more lentils and onions. Man, these guys must be farting so heavily during their night. I would not want to sleep next to a fire inside of these tents. Do we have any other options here? So besides some more farms, I currently don't see the option to do so. And those additional spaces here that are showing whenever we access the construction menu, I'm actually thinking that once we fill in all of these other structures and the number of tents here will be fully populated, it might prompt us to extend this construction and therefore turn the refugee camp into a better camp or self-sufficient colony or whatever should we call this place but yeah uh the problem here is of course that i need to talk to the merchant who will be able to sell me the gold powder and the silver powder and for that i will require the daytime so i'm just gonna head to the quarry save up the progress come back during the daytime and I'll talk to you during then. So, see you soon. Day 2. Okay, and we are finally back. So I'm gonna go chase after the cook. And she is going towards the outhouse. So, I'm not really sure if this is the right time. But, let's try it. It's like being in chains. I'm down to my last 12 types of relish. I can't bear it. Yeah, so this is usually what you're gonna get initially when you talk to her. But uh, let's add 30 more points of reputation by talking to her about the added beehives. From this moment forward, your life will be much sweeter. Oh, you're such a treasure. I'm so happy, but... Okay, that's it. You're going off the cliff. I should have predicted this, but... But I remember I promised you to tell my culinary secrets. So what rep so what recipes do you want to know? Yeah, I'm not reading this again. Vegetable set milk processing. In lentils we trust honey cake. Ooh, I want to know all of these. Vegetable set. You've unlocked a new technology and got create vegetable salad, create vegetable stew, create creamy vegetable soup. Interesting. Seriously, guys, you, you could have like given her at least a couple of options. Milk processing. You've unlocked a new technology and got create cheese, create butter, create cream of mushroom soup. Interesting. So far, the only way you can get your hands on butter and milk and cheese is when you go to the map and go to the village. One of the victims of the vampire, I totally forgot her name, sorry, uh, and she's not even like in the list of the NPCs, I do believe, or maybe she is. Hold on, give me a second. Yeah, so Rosa. Rosa is actually the person who will sell you milk, cheese, and butter. But now, if we will get some animals for the refugee camp, we just might be able to make our own stuff. Which might actually explain some of the tech which is currently locked. So I'm really hoping there's gonna be like some 
potential to create a different workstation or, or, or god knows what else. So, so far we have unlocked only some of these recipes. I do wonder if you will stop. You know what, Let, let's go talk to you. And I will want to buy the silver powder and the gold powder. As you can see, this is quite the pricey purchase for 1 gold, 11 silvers and 43 coppers. So this is why I assume uh, this is not that much for start of a brand new save. I'm gonna take these two things and I'm gonna chase after the cook. And I'm gonna talk about more recipes. In lentils we trust. You've unlocked a new technology and got create lentil porridge, create fancy lentil soup, create lentil cutlets. Okay, so lentil cutlets is the first dish the cook was actually making when we had the original cooking table constructed for the refugee camp. And I believe there is one more. Honey cakes. You've unlocked a new technology and got create honey cake. Okay, so we're gonna have to go back to our graveyard in order to find out what are the ingredients required to make some of these dishes. And as you can see, there are still four that are missing. So we still have some room to do more things. Okay, so let's go back. I'll prepare a few things and we'll talk soon again. Day three. Okay, so let me explain why I'm still trying to go see and talk to Clotho. You see, the game has certain features which allow you to skip through certain grinding segments of the game. As for example, when you try to interact and trade with some of these NPCs, they give you a sort of shortcut to obtaining certain alchem alchemy ingredients or just allow you to obtain certain items which otherwise you would be required to obtain by doing research, unlocking technology and doing god knows how much additional playthrough. So for example, the way I got my hands on the gold injections was by actually purchasing the gold elixir from Clotho herself. We are able to do this thing and by doing so I was able to skip through a whole lot of hoops in the alchemy tech tree and because one feature of the game which nobody tells you about to use is the graveyard keepers wiki page. This is an amazing tool. Now the biggest problem which you will be facing the same as I did when I started to cover the game of Crone is the fact that the wiki page will take approximately maybe a week until it populates all the necessary information that needs to be included for the game. So uh, basically when I try to cover the game and there are some newly added features, I usually try to include the footage from the wiki page directly into the in-game footage. It's actually much more educational and it provides more than just an entertainment point of view for the game as I'm trying to showcase mostly the content from the newly added DLC and I try to avoid from any of the previous content which you were able to previously experience if you played the game before. Like I said, I for example played the beta of the game and uh, ever since then so many more things have been added that it's a much much more pleasant experience. But yeah, the main reason why I wanted to talk about this is the fact that we can potentially obtain more memory powder. I wanted to see if we can talk to her about the fact that I cannot actually make the potion uh, work, but I don't see that option here. So maybe it will happen after we try to obtain the memory powder. Okay, so the memory powder has been obtained was actually wondering if she has the memory powder even here included because when I got the game 
it was really badly released, specifically the DLC, due to the fact that a small patch has been pre-launched before the DLC went online. And this patch added features like the sounds which you hear when the bats are attacking you, when you are molding dough on the cooking table, or whatever you are doing. These were previously missing from the game, certain NPCs have now different voices and things like this. So basically the small patch has included the memory powder and even the alchemy recipe for the tincture. And this confused the hell out of me because I've spent like 40 minutes running around the map trying to figure out what the hell is going on. So yeah, but now that we are able to obtain more of this memory powder, we should not have any issue. Because I have access to so much money, I can stock up on the memory powder and I'm just gonna grab like a couple of more of those. So we have four, which should allow me to make like two more potions I do believe. So let's go check on the current status yeah there's a lot of alcohol here if someone would match or light a match this whole thing would go kaboom and this is also why I try to kind of skip from some of this stuff because Honestly, I have skimmed through some of the streams on YouTube and uh, certain videos were like 3 hours long and most of it was just the grinding part and there was lack of the content from the DLC so I'm actually trying to just show you that footage instead of mostly showing you the work which goes behind the scenes sort of it just helps me render the footage a bit quicker and also makes it more entertaining i do believe so let's go see if we can create more of that memory tincture and if third time is the charm or if i'm just gonna keep on using this weird alchemy recipe until something weird happens So, third time's the charm, right? I really hope we won't overdose on this thing. So far, nothing. Nothing again. Wait, what the hell is happening? Please don't tell me I'm gonna turn into a vampire. late do you require another lesson in respect you miserable worms it's not our fault mistress the town is much less friendly to vampires these days the order of undead hunters patrols the night street with nets to catch bats Yeah, it's a blessing we managed to make it here at all. You useless nobodies, your endless silly excuses. That's all I ever get from you. Have you wrung anything more from that priest? We tried everything, mistress, but Alaric is incredibly resistant. Pain, cold, hunger, thirst, nothing works. Then use bloodthirst, you mindless fools. You mean we should turn him? But it's an awful sin, and... It will be done, mistress. Damn, that was cool. Oh 
no, my eyes. It's like I've been staring at the sun for a whole hour. And that's another achievement. But I've learned something new. I must learn more about that woman. They mentioned the Order of Undead Hunters, so maybe Shepard knows about her. And I cannot believe we're about to go and talk to a guy who force-fed us garlic. And of course, Alaric might remember something too. Okay, well unfortunately it's night time, so we're gonna have to wait until daytime in order for us to talk more with the NPCs. So I'll just go take a nap and I'll talk to you guys in a couple of moments. See you soon. Day 4 What are the chances Lady Beatrice is that vampire from that vision we were able to see? I do really wonder if that is a possibility. Hmm. Okay, let's go find Shepard. Should be somewhere around the farm with Rose. Ooh, there's something to be examined here. There was a long line here. Corey, Adam, Miller, Merchant, and five others. All allegedly elegant, allegedly elegantly dressed with flowers and gifts. Oh, they're here to woo Rose. Shepard appears, pushes everyone to side, takes Rose in his hands, kisses her lips, and carries her away. Damn! Not really sure why I needed to know that piece of information, but okay. Let's go talk to the Shepard. Why do you have to go and do that? If you hadn't intervened, I'd have the bloodsucker the next second. Or he would have dealt with you in half a second. Sorry about that, I promise it won't happen again. Good, he didn't stand a chance. You saw how he was so frightened he went deaf. <laughs> yeah, not really. Okay, let's ask about the mysterious woman. Don't leave your home without weapons, Keeper. These days we must be on the lookout. Evil is everywhere. No kidding, tell me what do you know about a woman in a black and gold cloak? If she is a werewolf, an evil spirit, a rider with burning skull instead of his head? Oh my god, are we gonna have a Nicolas Cage cameo in here? She might be a vampire, but I'm not sure. Then let's go kill her, dissect her, and find out. Well, she was around 30 years... She, she, she was around 30 years ago, but who knows where she is now, or if she's still alive. A black and gold cloak, you say? Hmm, I remember one fresco... I always admired it when I visited the town cathedral as a child. It was called Master vs. Vampire Queen. And that queen wore a cloak like the one you mentioned. Vampire Queen? Hmm, that sounds terrifying. Okay, so Shepard did provide us with at least information that this might be Vampire Queen. But for more intel, we're gonna have to go and talk to the old Inquisitor 
who is suffering from the vampire curse. For that reason, I also took a blood with me just so that we can hook him up with some of that iron. Let's go to the refugee camp. We are sitting at 7.66 out of 9 happiness. That's pretty decent. That is pretty decent. Unfortunately, I do not see the possibility for me to currently build additional tent and therefore expand the population limit. So we might have to do something in regards to trigger that event to happen. Don't hold out for gratitude, just be glad that they're not throwing stones at you. Let's give him the blood. And we will get 25 coppers for that, which actually if all things considered, if you just keep grinding through corpses because carrot seeds are not that expensive. And also, if you try to utilize the exploit of obtaining two burial certificates per one corpse, where you don't make as much money specifically because you require the exhumation certificate, because once you bury the corpse in the cemetery, you then use the exhumation note to exhume the body and then you go drop it off at the crematorium where you burn the body. This will give you two burial certificates, but due to the fact that one burial certificate is equal to 1.50 gold, uh, 1 silver, 50 coppers, and the exhumation note is worth 1 silver, 75 coppers, it not, it's not as profitable. But if we count in the 25 coppers for the blood which we would give to Master Alaric, that difference might actually work out on your behalf, so you will have to find out on your own if that would be worth your while. So let's go ask about the mysterious woman. Sorry that I keep ranting so much on this episode. I have some new information, Master Alaric, about the vampires who kidnapped you. There was a woman who ordered them to do it, and to turn you into a vampire. A woman in a black and gold cloak. Have you ever heard anything about her? I would have remembered if the kidnappers mentioned her, but they didn't. They mentioned ghouls a lot. They said they'd feed me to them if I kept quiet. How foolish. Every adult knows that ghouls don't exist. Then why the hell do I have Witcher's eye? I think that woman might be the key to our mystery. Sorry, I can't help you, but listen. Why do you smell so strange? The thing is, when Lady Beatrice visited me, she... It, it doesn't matter. It's that lilac and gooseberries, I tell you. Who else might know about this vampire queen? Who is so comfortable dealing with the undead? Gary! Okay, we can actually go and try to talk to Gary. Gonna have to go back to our sweet sweet home. We're gonna go to the morgue. And we will see if we can actually find out some information. Gary, have you ever met a woman in a black and gold cloak? That's a pretty funny question to ask a guy with amnesia. Partial amnesia. So have you heard anything about the Vampire Queen? 
Sure, I've heard some things. In fact, that was the lighthouse keeper's ex-wife's nickname when they played private games at home. <laughs> Yowza. Holy fudge. Gary, please stop making jokes. This is serious. Actually, one thing. You are talking to the wrong guy. There are only two reliable sources of hard facts. Town housewives and ghosts. I can't reach town, Gary. Then come back tomorrow and meanwhile I'll chat up the local ghosts. But I'll have you know, this is skull exploitation. By the way, what's with the new smell? Is it cloves? It's disgusting! Okay, so this is a massive, massive spoiler. So, in case you do not know, the astrologer is the father of Miss Charm. Okay? Now let's take a look at Miss Charm and let's take a look at Lady Beatrice. Now I cannot zoom in during the playtime but I might try to zoom in during the editing of the footage it looks like Lady Beatrice is actually blonde so theoretically her being mother of Miss Charm hmm it's one of those chaos theories I know I know I know but it's gonna take a while for us to be able to talk to any of them so we're gonna have to wait for the next day for Gary to return after he has some ghostly podcast. Yeah, I know. It probably won't be able to compare itself to Joe Rogan's podcast, but who knows. Okay, so Gary told us to wait until the next day in order for him to do god knows what and so that we can trigger additional event and potentially find out some information as to what is actually happening and who is the lady in the dark and gold cloak that's actually quite the killer combination now that i think about it i would not probably mind having a cloak like that on my own but just based on what the Incredibles did so many years ago where they have proven that having a cloak is kind of idiotic, the only person who I have not seen struggle with it until this day is probably Batman. But yeah, since all of that is fiction, I still think they are impractical as hell. So let's go see if talking to Gary will trigger the event. Also in the meantime, I have dropped off some carrots here because currently we are done with whatever the donkey will require from us. So I'm really hoping that triggering him to drop off additional corpse will make him stop here and demand additional support for his Bolshevik party. So, let's talk about the vampire queen. Did the ghost tell you anything? Of course, one ghost named William visited a couple of students and told them that their uncles killed their fathers. That's not related. Yeah, that's incredibly important. It, is that it? Almost. About the black gold cloak, they remembered the ghost weirdo from the dungeon. He came around only once, back before the great blast. He was... What? He was searched from the same woman? That's worse English than mine is! She had taken his leg and wouldn't give it back. That's better than nothing, so where can I find this weirdo? 
He had a lisp. He had a lisp. So he must be from the eighth floor. Don't ask why. And and if you want him to appear, you'll need a special amulet. Hmm. So how do I get this amulet? Well, you can make one out of human intestines, some wax, and oh yeah, the hair of a donkey communist. That's highly specific. Yes, yes, just don't ask why. Okay, uh, hold on. I'm just gonna drop off the body on the table and I'll go see outside if the donkey is still waiting out there. Unfortunately, no. We said there is no money in revolutions. Merchant will be delighted to see this stuff. Okay, so I just received jewelry and bank checks. Now, what happens if we try to use the bank checks? Man, it's impossible to cash them. They're personalized. They're nothing more than kindling. So maybe we will be able to sell this at the refugee camp. Maybe. Let's see. Refugee camp, here we go! Okay, where is the merchant with the money? Money, money, money. Okay, I cannot find him. Ah, here you are, sir. What do you mean, not now? Don't you dare go inside the tent. Stop. Talk to me. Don't leave me. I've been so alone during COVID. No! Damn it! Okay, well, everyone left me. As per usual, forever alone. Yeah, COVID's been weird. Anyhow, I have decided to cut off the episode here. I think we have covered quite a lot of stuff. Now, I have cut off, of course, some of the grindy things, but if there will be something, that will be related to the newly added content, of course, that will be featured here. So, if you did like the episode, please consider giving it a like. It helps tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. If you click like and more people click like on a video, then the content is pushed out onto more potential viewers and I can theoretically create a bigger community around the channel. For all of those of you who have decided to subscribe to the channel, I would like to thank you one more time. For those of you who have not decided to yet subscribe to the channel, just please note that I publish content on a weekly base. I do playthroughs, discussions, early in-game reviews, tips and tricks videos, and I plan on doing a whole lot more things eventually, so stick around and see what's going on around the channel. Link will be in the description. I'm gonna wish you a pleasant rest of the day, and hopefully I will see you at the next one. Thank you for watching, stay safe, have fun, and bye bye Level 8 dungeon, that is so highly specific, right? I do wonder if the Witcher's Eye is the amulet which I will require. No, that is not where I wanted to teleport myself. Yeah, not sure professional walkthroughs was the correct name for the channel.